Earlier this week in Bloomington, it was another typical battle between Kentucky and Indiana, and the Cats came ever so close to beating the odds. Reggie Hansen played only 15 minutes. Five Wildcats fouled out. But with John Pelfrey leading the way, Kentucky came within three points of upsetting the sixth-ranked team in the nation. Tonight, an old friendship is renewed as Rick Pitino is matched up against his former assistant, Ralph Willard, now the head man in Bowling Green. It's Kentucky against Western Kentucky coming up next. University of Kentucky Wildcat Basketball is sponsored in part by the 18 Rural Electric Cooperatives of the East Kentucky Power System, by your local Pepsi-Cola bottler, by Great Financial Federal, your key to financial security, by Long John Silvers, making a splash with great-tasting seafood, by Toyota, I love what you do for me, Toyota, by Ashland Oil and its Valvoline subsidiary, reminding you that better education is the bottom line. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. Throughout the history of basketball in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, no two schools have meant success like the two schools that meet tonight in the first ever regularly scheduled basketball game as the University of Kentucky Wildcats meet the Hilltoppers of Western from Freedom Hall in Louisville. Hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Packer, along with former Kentucky guard Jim Master. Jim, you never had the opportunity to play in a regular season against a Kentucky team. How do you feel about it? Well, I think it's a good idea. I think Kentucky, the tradition in these two schools is, is a good thing. And Coach Ralph Willard, that's the big story tonight. He's a UK disciple, a Rick Pitino disciple. So we're going to see a lot of fast-paced basketball. And I think it's really good for the state of Kentucky. One of the people who will have to have a big ball game tonight for the Wildcats is Reggie Hansen. And for one of the very few times, and the first time, this year he'll be the biggest man on the floor well he really will he needs to get in there and work very hard the last game against indiana he only had five shots they have to get him more involved get reggie hansen the ball inside he's six foot eight i think he'll have a big game and he only played 15 minutes against indiana they need to keep him in the basketball game what else do you look for tonight to be the keys to kentucky winning over western well, Kentucky has to come out and play hard, of course. They always have to do that. But the biggest keys are the tempo, and they have to stop the three-point shot. They have to defend that trade by Western Kentucky, because Western Kentucky will surely shoot a lot of them. And then they have to handle Western changing defenses. And, of course, we've already said Reggie Hansen. Make him the BMOC, the big man on the court. He needs to go out there, play hard, get him the basketball, and get him involved. As you mentioned a minute ago, Ralph Woodard is indeed a Rick Pitino disciple, which means that he will like to shoot the three-point shot. Defensing that is going to be be a big part of Kentucky's plan tonight. Let's check in with Rob Bromley and Tubby Smith and look at that. Well, Ralph, both teams love to shoot the three, and that means both teams here tonight are going to have to guard against the three. Assistant coach Smith along with me and Tubby, really, I think you've done a good job of getting out on the perimeter and guarding against three points. We're doing a good job in transition defense and locating the potential three-point shooters. We're holding people to 29% this year and doing an excellent job. As you see here against Indiana, Pelfrey picks up the guy quickly in transition defense. We put good, hard ball pressure so that the guy can't locate his open man, an open man quickly. And once we find the guy on the perimeter, we go out and we challenge the shot, force him to put it on the floor so he doesn't get the three-point shot off. That's going to be important tonight because the three is an important weapon in both, for both teams tonight. Well, it sure is. We'll see what happens. Good luck, Tubby. And we'll see who gets the most threes up tonight and who hits the most threes, Ralph. It could very well be that tonight here in Freedom Hall, Rob. And we'll be back to introduce the two teams to you in just a minute as Western is in town to play the Kentucky Wildcats. Freedom Hall to see Kentucky and Western go at it. The first time Kentucky has played in regular season a Kentucky team since 1944 when they played Berea. And now let's go to the Doug Bruce and get our starting lineup. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Freedom Hall for basketball action featuring the toppers of Western Kentucky University and your University of Kentucky Wildcats. And now the starting lineups. First for Western, 
At forward, a 6'3 sophomore from Cleveland, Tennessee, wearing number three, Darnell V. At forward, a 6'5 junior from Covington, Kentucky, wearing number 34, Jack Jennings. At center, a 6'5 sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio, wearing number 24, Carl Brown. At guard, at guard a 5'11 senior from Gary, Indiana, wearing number 10, Anthony Paul. And at guard, a 6'4 senior from Kenki, Illinois, Wearing number 13, Joe Lightfoot. And the head coach of Western, Ralph Willard. in just a minute. Dave Dodge will toss the basketball up here at Freedom Hall. Western Kentucky fans are here in great numbers. They had 5,000 tickets. They call and got 3,000 more. Hanson to jump against me. The Wildcats have the opening tip. They have the opening tip. He has become the heart and soul of this team. Puts Kentucky out on top. Two to nothing. Western, first offensive try, Kentucky knocking it away. Western having a little trouble with the press early on, Jim. And this is exactly how Kentucky wants to start. They got the easy layup, Pelfrey put the layup in, and now they got the deflection. So they're, they're in an up-tempo game, and that's what they want to do. Mees number three, Jennings 34, Brown 24, Palm 10, and Lightfoot 13. This is me. Missing a chance to tie it up, and Mashburn off for the rebound. The leading rebounder for the Kentucky Lieutenant of the game. Hanson in the middle. Reggie. Rebound belongs to Western. They rebounded a clip of 38 of all game. Western Kentucky moving quickly with the basketball. Inside, they tie it up on a basket by Joe Lightfoot, a junior college man out of Kankakee, Illinois. And I really like him. He's one of the better athletes on the team. He shoots 50% from three-point range, so Kentucky has to respect him outside. Knocked away from Hanson. Knocked out of bounds. It'll come back to the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Ralph, the Ralph. officials are David Dodds, Gerald Boudreau, and Tom Lopes, all out of the Southeastern Conference. Ralph Willard said earlier today that he was probably going to start man-to-man -man and then switch it to a 3-2 zone after the first couple plays of the game. But right now, they're man-to-man -man and look for him to go zone to slow the tempo down. Woods with the ball. Woods working man-to-man -man against Anthony Paul. Woods had a good ball game against Indiana. Took the last shot that didn't go. Pelfrey for three. Western Kentucky on the rebound. That's Lightfoot. Western running. The game is tied. Me against Pelfrey, and they leave. Darnell Me gives Western their first lead of the ball game. It is out now at 4 to 2. And I told you Lightfoot was a good athlete, but he's their best athlete. Willard said today in practice, he's the kid that can get them going. Me can take it to the hole. A foul underneath is going to be on Jack Jennings, his first foul. It'll be out of bounds to the Wildcats. Take a look at it inside. Pell for the nice swing pass there. He looks inside. We thought they'd try to go to Hanson a lot. They tried to dig it in there. Now, there's a big boy inside there. That Jennings kid is about 250 pounds. He's out of Covington, played at Covington Holmes. Then he came up here to play at Sullivan Junior College in Louisville. Last week, 
against the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. The young man played there, played at Sullivan Jr. also. Grasso still has only taken two shots inside the three-point lane this year. And he steals the basketball. Woods with it. First turnover for the Hilltoppers. Dave Reggie. Reggie Hanson, good move. Rebound comes off to Darnell Mee. Here come the Hilltoppers again. Jennings. Light foot to palm. Jennings for three. Woods on the rebound. Sean Woods, a two-point try. Jennings on the rebound. He averages almost seven boards a night. Front court to me. They say he's the best athlete on this team. They set it up with Anthony Palm of the Wildcats. Coming up man-to-man. -man. And you can see Western taking it out here a little bit. Stalling just a little bit. Looking for a little bit better shot. They get the middle open and draw the foul. Kentucky committing the personal. That's going to be on Jeff Grasso. Wins back his starting spot tonight. Here it is. They spread the court. That's what Willard's going to do to Kentucky. Now they get the drive. Their best athlete, we've already said it. Me goes inside, has good slashy moves to the basket, took it up strong and gets the foul. Ralph Willard. He played a few years ahead of Rick Patino at St. Dominic's. He was with him with the New York Knicks and at the helm of Kentucky last year. Darnell Me. He's hit on 10 of 14 from the free throw line this year. Gives him three points. Western now with their biggest lead on the boards out of three. Some great names in the past from Western Kentucky. Daryl Carrier, Jim McDaniel. Mashburn on the rebound. 17-19 left, first half of play. First time these two teams ever met. Western annihilated the Wildcats in the NCAA in 1971 in Athens, Georgia. Kentucky came back to return the favor a few years ago down in North Carolina. Reggie Hanson. Reggie Hanson's first basket of the night. That makes it 5-4 to four Western. I like the offensive philosophy, though. They're going into Reggie quite a bit. Looking inside, Reggie taking it up strong. Maybe that'll get him going. Jennings in against Belfry. Knocked away. Jennings with a rebound. Me. Mashburn comes down with another board. Grasso blocked. Palm gets the hand on it. He is 6-1. Grasso is 6-5. Flying his second three-pointer of the night. He's the guy that gets Western going. He's the point guard. He has a broken bone in his foot right now. Has a special pad. Gets up high enough on that one to block Rasso's shot, but a good athletic play. Another junior college man into the ball game. Harold Tompkins out of Milledgeville, Georgia, playing for jo for Western. Six to five and rebound. Western leads it by one. They lead the game by one. Hanson out of bounds. The Wildcats turning it over for the first time tonight. I think Kentucky looks a little over anxious, especially Hanson. He hasn't got off to good starts the last couple games, and I think he's trying a little bit too hard. Take a deep breath, Reggie, and relax. He'll get it going. Reggie blocked it. Woods. Woods gets it. He gets two. Kentucky coming back with a press. Kentucky in the lead by one. And they're playing better with their defense right now. Not playing very well offensively, but their defense is going to get them back in it and get them going. This is Tompkins. The point guard Palm says, let me set it up. Hanson out there guarding him. Interesting matchup there. You see how they spread the court. They want to make this game go down a little bit to the wire, so they're spreading the court, taking some time off the clock. You're looking at a Western Kentucky team that's been depleted several times this year with injuries, including now. Tompkins gets a three-pointer, and Western's back to the clock. We can really get into that injury report later on, but it is a catastrophe over there. Ralph Willard just said, Jim, it's unbelievable. Talked to him today at practice how many injuries they've had, and we'll get into it a little bit later. Western coming to the zone for the first time. Woods. John Woods picking up the dribble, has it knocked away, and he comes back with the steal. Mashburn. Western really crashing the boards hard as Jennings pulls down yet another rebound. That'll be his fourth. He has four of the seven Western has. He's come to play. And Western looks a little bit more aggressive in there than Kentucky. I think they're going after the ball a little bit harder right now. They get two more as Hopkins gets five points. And it's 10-6. Western leads it by four. 
We have 15 minutes to go in the first half. Western's first five players out on the court right now are good athletes. They're small, but they're quick. They possess problems for Kentucky because they're a little bit quicker out there. Mashburn. Jamal Mashburn had a hard time getting it going against Indiana. Just drops in his first field goal on his first attempt. Kentucky's now four out of 12 from outside. Maybe this will be the night that the Monster Mash gets it going. He needs to get more aggressive inside. That was a good move by him that time, but he needs to get aggressive. Walking violation. That'll be the third Western Kentucky turnover, and it comes with 14 minutes and 18 seconds to go. It is Western 10, Kentucky 8. Ralph Woodard will talk to his team with a timeout on the floor here at Freedom Hall. University of Kentucky, 33 and 12 down here in Freedom Hall. 96 and 27 when they play down to the armory and the other couple of gymnasiums here in this wonderful city. 10 to 8. Kentucky trails. There's the Hilltopper mascot. I remember some of those wins in here. Played in some of them and played in a loss, too. Richie Farmer gets in the game, and Richie gets his first back door in him. I like Richie coming off the bench, too. He's a good shooter. He can provide a spark, and that's what they're looking for. The Kentucky lineup has Woods, Feldhaus, Farmer, Pelfrey, and Hanson now. Western coming into the ball game with... Uh, Itutus, Jason Itutus, he's out of Radcliffe, Kentucky, along with Brian Brown, number 44. Jennings goes to the bench. Brown's kind of a surprise for Western. He's been injured, had a sprained knee, but now he's come back uh, surprisingly quick for him. Western having to go to backcourt to get it in play. Brown. Butts is into the ball game. This is Patrick Butts. Mike Ralph Woodard wants to use as many people as he can early on in the game. Tried to stay close to make a big run at Kentucky in the end of it. There were some fresh troops. You're right. What's big there is it's 10 to 10, so it's tied so he can put some troops in. We've got to travel out front. That'll be four turnovers as David Dodge makes the call. The score tied for the second time, 10 all. Four turnovers for Western Kentucky. Good pressure by, by the University of Kentucky, and only one for, for the Wildcats. Inside the Feldhaus, the Farmer for three. Rushing on the rebound. Tompkins bringing it down. 13 20 to go, first half of play. But they can't get that three pointer dropping tonight, Ralph. Kentucky 0 for 3 right now in three point shots. Hanson on the rebound. Reggie pulling in his first rebound of the night, and Weston coming back for the steal. Me. They turn it over. Kentucky would get it right back. The second stringers may be a little bit more uptight as you would might expect for the Hilltoppers. I think both teams are uptight. Both first and second team only have 10 points scored in the first seven minutes. They're a little bit over aggressive right now. A little sloppy play, but they'll settle down, both teams. Brasso into the ball game. Pelfrey goes out for Kentucky. Under 13 minutes left, first half. Palmer. Looking for somebody who can pump it up and hit one. And Woods really has to get that penetration now. That's what you're going to watch for. He needs to penetrate, but they're going to be alert to that, and he needs to kick it off. Hanson. Brasso. Richie for three. Good play by Jeff Brasso. He's fighting strong for it into Iturvis, and he comes back in down to Kentucky. Some of the Western fans, they don't believe it. Western's going to make four substitutions. They get starters back in the ball game. They get Lightfoot. They get Palm. They get Jennings back into the game. That's platooning him, isn't it? And Carl Brown's back in. And you talked about that. That's exactly what Ralph Willard needed right there. He got some troops in, got some guys some rest. It's warm in this gymnasium. Very warm. Farmer. Feldhaus. They can't get a three to go. Barrasso. He didn't protect it. He goes out of bounds. On a break, Kentucky would get it back. They, Coach Patino called him a New York hustler. <laughs> Speaking of Coach Willard, that he was just himself. There's Willard. Patino called himself just a country boy. Yeah, well, I had fun with you today, Ralph. I said, now, Ralph, last year you told me that you knew how to beat the press, and you showed me how to do it. Now, can you beat it tonight? He says, Jim, I know how to beat it. I just don't know if I have the athletes to beat it. Kentucky is now 0 for a bunch, 0 for 7 from three-point land. 
Western one and two. Lightfoot. You've really got to like the spacing here Western has. They're spreading Kentucky out, making them play man-to-man, -man, and believe me, that gets tiring trying to guard somebody on the court like that. Good move there. Western just missing on the two-point run. Reggie Hansen pulls it down. 11.40 to go, first half, tie game. Hansen makes three and walks. Third turnover for Kentucky. Reggie Hansen, he may be a little tight because for the first time ever, his older brother Arthur is seeing him play as a University of Kentucky player. We'll talk to Arthur later on tonight. That's true. I'm really feeling for Reggie right now because I know he's going to have a big game. He'll get it going. He just hasn't got it going the last couple, and you get aggressive. You get a little bit too tense out there to do too well. Palm against Woods. Kentucky man-to-man -man from the outside. Kentucky's trying to create the action, and Western's trying to stall a little bit and look for that good one. That's three. The second three-pointer by Harold Tompkins. He's the leading scorer of the game with eight. Richie Farmer. And a pushing off foul against Kentucky. It's going to be on Reggie Hansen. I don't think Kentucky has taken this Western Kentucky group lightly at all. But the Kentucky group appears a little bit uptight. Maybe because they're playing against their old assistant coach. Really is, is flat. Uh, I know we've only played nine minutes, but this is as flat as I've seen them. And, and probably the worst shooting exhibition they've done in a whole long time. Matter of fact, from the outside, Kentucky is 5 of 18 from the field. On the inside, that's Carl Brown gets two. I really like Carl Brown. He's strong inside, knows his role, gets it inside, and he'll take it up strong. That's the biggest lead Western has had. Feldhouse, Brasso, Farmer, Oakley. We're really paying particular attention to John Pelfrey off the wing of that point. They're getting good help defense right now, too, and there's a drive. Someone's right there to make him kick the basketball out. Rasso. He finally gets it to ball. Kentucky's now one out of nine in three-pointers. Rasso gets three, and it's back to a two-point game. Farmer, good backdoor steal, knocking it away. Real good hustle that time by Richie Farmer. Belfry. Grass on the save. Reggie. 15 all. Game tied for the third time. Western back to the front with Carl Brown getting four. The Hilltoppers are seven out of 13. Farmer. Western basketball. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first half of play. Here it is. Watch Pelfrey. Now his shot's not on either. This is way off the mark. Good hustle right here by Brasso and both Farmer. I'm sorry, Brasso and Feldhouse. And inside, but watch Reggie Hansen go to the hall here. Drop step, slam dunk, and that got the crowd going. Boom, it's timeout. 9.30 to go. First half, Kentucky trails Western by two. This is Ralph Packer. We've got 17-15. Western leading with nine and a half to go in the first half of play. There's Todd Barrett in your screen. He's the young man who became eligible just the other day. Western 54%. Kentucky ice cold. 32. One out of 11 from three-point land. And three-pointer. There it is. Two or three for Western. One for 11 for Kentucky. That's almost unbelievable. And if Kentucky's going to win the basketball game, they're going to have to hit from the outside because Ralph Bullard said, I'm going to have to let them shoot it. we got to contain them inside. Light foot. This is Paul. He goes against Pelfrey. Brown. Rebound Kentucky. That's Hanson. 9.05 left first half. Western doing a good job defensively against Kentucky. They really are, and especially on Woods, when he tries to drive the butt, but he's got to kick it off. Grasso, missed for three. <laughs> Jennings for three. Nobody there for the Hilltoppers. Woods with it. Reggie. No. 
They just dominating the backboards. That is 10 rebounds for the Wildcats. Western has her about 12. This one with 10. This will not make any tapes on fundamentals of basketball tonight. They are having a difficult time handling the ball, shooting the ball. So uh, it really, really a disastrous night. Sean Woods coming with the ball. That was a six turnover for Western. See, Woods is trying to get penetration against this zone, but Willard's doing a good job of containing him and making him pass the ball. They keep it away from Hanson. Four turnovers for Kentucky. Western leading the game, 17-15. They have trailed by two, have led by five. Out of bounds. Kentucky will get it. That time John Pelfrey really didn't get very good position. Brown got the rebound, was in position to put it right back up and in. Luckily for Kentucky, fumbled the basketball. Hanson. Woods. Well, he almost walked there. Ralph won it. Hanson. Ripped away and a foul me. Not sure about that one. Close call, but that's the shot Kentucky has to hit, and I don't mean the one Hanson took, but when Woods can get the ball, there's the shot up. Pelfrey's going to have to hit that shot, or somebody's going to have to because they're open there, but here's a good rebound by Hanson. He goes in. Uh, lucky call there for Kentucky, probably, but at least he took it up strong. And Reggie Hanson will go up to the line. Reggie's 25 of 31 for this man, Rick Pitino, this year when he goes to the charity line. And Ralph, he just has to get more involved in Kentucky's offense. Four points, two rebounds tonight. The kids are looking for him more inside, but he's a potential NBA basketball player, and he, he banks one in, and I don't know if he called that one, did he? But he walked away <laughs> laughing. <laughs> and he will get ridden by the team over there really hard for the next couple days. Well, he can laugh again and again rhythm as he gets two in a row, ties the game for the fourth time, and then it's over and back on the steal. Western gets it. Really an unlucky break that time. Woods got the nice steal, but his foot was on the line. I could see it from here, so it was a good call by the official. The red towel symbolizing Western Kentucky. The man who made it famous was Ed Diddle, longtime coach. Named the arena after as they honored Adolph Rupp in Lexington. Coached in the same era. Me. Lock. Me wants to know where the foul was. Woods with it. Mashburn. Like a great train. He goes in for number four. And now John Pelfrey's been called for the foul. The things John Pelfrey does away from the basketball are many, many times the things that fire up this Kentucky team, like going for the steal. And, and here's the play I've been waiting for for three or four games. Take it to the hole strong. The big fellow goes up, slam dunk. He has to do that more. He has the capabilities. He has the talent. Take it strong to the basket. And the coaches have been working individually with Mashburn to get him to do that. That's it's Ralph Willard again. Well, the tempo is to Western Kentucky's liking here. Kentucky needs to speed this game up and get it running and gunning. Low scoring, first half, seven minutes to go. Woods coming out to get fouled. Mashburn's got Jennings down low. It's out of bounds. Kentucky will get it back. Eight Western Kentucky turnovers. And there's timeout now being called by Western Kentucky. Jamal Mashburn leads the Kentucky Wildcats over to Coach Patino, and we'll take a break. Kentucky leads it by two, 1917. Toppers of Western for seven seasons, and Jim, it's good to see you here tonight. How do you feel about these two schools getting together? I'm sorry, Rob, with the, I couldn't hear you. How do you feel about these two schools oh, getting together? From Western's perspective, it's a fantastic arrangement. We enjoy playing the University of Kentucky, and I think it's good for the whole state, the entire Commonwealth. Uh, your team's not looking too bad here. We're playing very well. Of course, uh, our coach, having come out of the U.K. program, understands how to play. All right, Jim, good to see you. Jim Thanks. Richards, Ralph. I'm under the understanding Western has been invited to play again next year here at Freedom Hall. And they'll join Moorhead. 6.35 to go. Here's Pelfrey underneath. And a foul in charge. John Pelfrey gets number one. That's only three team fouls. 
against Kentucky. Just uh, a little bit over anxious that time again. Kentucky went to the hole nice, but uh, just wanted to try to put it in the hole too good and got the charge. Make that 14 fouls. The ball boys, they're Patinos. <laughs> they start early there in that family. Ralph, here's an interesting statistic for the fans out there. Kentucky is only one for 14 from three-point range for 7%. Western Kentucky two for five for 40 percent. 1917 Kentucky leads by two. That equals their biggest lead. They trail by as many as five here in the first half. Poor guy's got some quickness at Patrick Butts. Only a freshman too. He comes in doing a good job spelling palm right now. Again, they're making Kentucky play that defense, spreading them out. Me. Jennings back up, blocked by Hanson. Woods. Jamal. Mee comes back with the rebound. It's three on two, Hillsboppers. High ball game. Butts gets his first two. That's the fifth, make that the, you know, the fifth tie we've had. Just broken by Reggie Hanson. And this is the pace Kentucky wants to go at here. Up and down the court, they need to do a defensive stop for a few times here and take the lead better than they are now. Just two-point lead right now. Me, Jennings. It's there. Jack Jennings gets his first two. He averages 15 and a half a game. Leading score for the Hilltoppers in the year. Hanson ties it up. And makes the lead, I should say, 23-21. And Woods with a nice dish off that time. Got good penetration inside. Kick it to Hanson. Tompkins comes into the game. Brian Brown comes into the game for Western. They've been in before. And Tompkins, when he was in, shot himself into eight points. This is Junior Braddy coming into the Kentucky lineup. For the first time tonight, Sean Woods goes out. Richie Farmer is also in for Kentucky. So it's Mashburn, Pelfrey, Farmer, Braddy, and Hanson. And it's the front court getting it done for Kentucky right now. They're 7 of 17. The guards for Kentucky only 3 of 12. Braddy on the steal. This call here. Good deflection by Hansen. Braddy with a nice pass. Watch him go to the bucket. I thought the defensive man just slid in on him. I think he did. I think this is a bad call. Hansen takes it strong to the hole, makes the basket, but I, did they wave it off? Yeah, no basket. Wave the basket off, and Jamel Martinez comes into the game. Martinez, the freshman out of Miami, replacing Reggie Hansen. 23-21. Kentucky leads it by two. So it's been a tough half on Kentucky physically because even though they're in great shape and probably the best shaped team in the country, playing defense full court is no fun task. Jim, you wouldn't know even half court <laughs> what it was like to play defense. That's why I would have liked the three-pointer. Maybe we could have shot more and didn't have to play as much defense. I don't think you've got the other <laughs> four guys to run all the time and throw the ball to you. were likable, but not that likable. 4 17 left. First half. Tompkins. This Western crowd's getting with it, too. Braddy on the rebound. Richie Farmer. Jamal Mashburn. Braddy for three. Western scrapping and scrapping and scrapping. They're digging him out. Out of bounds. It'll come back to Kentucky. It was Brian Brown who couldn't hold on to the handle. Ralph Willard said, nope, we do it this way, guys. We do it this way. And Brown, again, he's coming off that knee sprain, so he might not be in as good a shape as he wants to be, but getting a little time tonight. Brown comes back into the game. This is Carl Brown. Jack Jennings goes out. 
So we have Carl Brown and Brian Brown. In. Look at that poor Kentucky three-point shooting. Three Coach, Coach Patino trying to find someone in the lineup to get him sparked. Braddy now in the basketball game. Farmer has a tough time shooting it tonight. There's Martinez, but someone needs to provide a spark here. And a foul's got to be on Western. They're holding down low. It's going to be on Carl Brown, his first. That is only three team fouls against Western Kentucky. And with Ralph Willard's style of play, a lot of these players for Western have lost weight. Brown's one of them, but he's a warrior inside. He really goes to war when they play a basketball game. Belfry. Ralph Belfry only has a field goal tonight. He's only taken a fourth block. He lit up the sky as they for Kentucky. He almost pulled it out. Half by Martinez. The officials are conferring as to which way the ball goes. Now they get all three of them. They say Kentucky. When in doubt, take the home team. I don't think Coach Willard enjoyed that call. That was right in front of the Western bench. Junior Braddy. Wesley gets it back anyway and a run out. What a move. They tied it up. Harold Tompkins gets 10. The game's tied at 23. Well, he's a great athlete. He broke his leg last year and did not play the season, but he is a great athlete. He's not missed a shot tonight. He's 4-4. Four four. Weston coming back again. Turn it over. Brown said, wait a minute. I'm not supposed to post up down there. That'll be 12 turnovers. Woods comes back into the game for Kentucky. So does Feldhaus. Mashburn goes out. And Braddy. 2.40 left till halftime. Game time. 23 all. Six time. Sean Woods for two. That's four. It was out of bounds. Kentucky's going to get it back. I thought Coach Patino was going to catch the ball. <laughs> and, and Coach Patino's not wearing a suit tonight. I think that might be a first. Maybe Armani uh, went out of those suits for him, but he's in a sport coat tonight. Dollar here says other things other than suits. <laughs> 219 left. Last, Woods. Time, last time Woods had the ball, he made a nice penetration and got the jump shot. If they're going to give him that shot, he's going to have to hit it. Farmer. Oh, somebody got him. I think it's going to be on number 42, Harold Tompkins. It was. Richie will go to the free throw line. Richie Farmer. Well, he played down here many times, won a lot of ball games here. Well, he's had some great games on his court. Now, Richie has good strength and good jumping ability. There he takes it in tall timber, goes up strong with it. Got the foul, and you could have taken your pick on that one, and he'll go to the free throw line and one of Kentucky's better free throw shooters. Richie's had a cold line of shooting, as has most of the Kentuckians. He hit his first field goal. He has now missed his next five, all of which have been three-point attempts. Martinez goes out of the game. Mashburn's back in. Grasso will come in. Helfrey will go out. An exchange of the towel. And Richie Farmer, who on the year has hit on 12 of 16 from the free throw line, goes up here. You know, that's not right. The leading three-point shooter is, is, Fel is Pelfrey, who's hitting on 51.3%. When you have nights like this, it seems everything goes wrong. Richie Farmer's a great free-throw shooter. Just can't get it going tonight. Twenty-six, twenty-three, Kentucky. That is their biggest lead. Farmer. He'll go back to the line. Palm commits his first. Good steal that time by Brasso. Saw the over-the-head pass. Got the nice steal. Look at this. Good extension. Got the deflection. Gets the ball. Good ball movement here again. Fieldhouse with the nice pass. Watch Farmer. Nice cut inside and takes it right to the hole. Again, he's a very strong guy, and he can get up in the air for as small as he is. Jennings go, comes out of the game. Brian Brown goes out. Richie Farmer can actually dunk the basketball. The only time I have ever seen him do it, personally, was down here at this gymnasium last year in the shoot around. Farmer comes up now with his fourth point. And even two minutes to go, first half. 
Kentucky's biggest lead on the board. 28-23. Now this is an important last two minutes just because Kentucky has a five-point lead. They can try to extend it here. Good job defensively by the Cats. Sherry has almost created the turnover if they have Western disoriented. Light foot, palm. Now he'll say set it up. 18 seconds to go on the shot clock. A minute 30 for the half. Knocked down, Woods has it. Now one official signal the basket, but it, I think it was tapped in. Yeah, that ball was coming off. Feldhouse tipped it in after with a nice slam dunk. But you just saw, saw Sean Woods at his best in the open court. Just blew by people. Here's the steal. Richie Farmer does a good job on the defensive end. Watch Woods just puts it in high gear here, coast to coast, and he knows what to do with it. Here, go right to the basket, gets the foul, almost got the two points. Watch Feldhouse come in there. Boom. Butts will come back into the game for Western. Woods coming into the game had shot more free throws than any other Kentuckian. One more than Richie Farmer. And has been hitting them, too. You know, last year he had problems at the free throw line. I'm glad I didn't jinx him there. Well, actually, it's one more than Reggie Hanson, not one more than Farmer. Woods has four assists and three turnovers tonight. Grasso. Farmer. That is eight points for Richie. He and Hanson are the leading scorers, and Kentucky now leads it by nine. And a good decision by Sean Woods that time, too, to reverse the ball. They kicked it out to him. He saw Farmer. Richie drops it through. What? Kentucky's defense pick it up in the last two minutes. That's the 16th turnover by Western. Three quarters of those have really been forced. Kentucky's really picked up the intensity the last few minutes, and now they got a chance to blow it open here a little bit before halftime. Kentucky's got 15 points after turnovers. Shot clock runs, 37 seconds, with 43 seconds left for the half. Mashburn. And a foul. The foul's got to be on Jack Jennings. His second. It's a seventh team foul. And not a smart foul that time by Western. They had Masper in the trap there, half court. There was only one thing he could do with it, and that was throw it forward. And they foul him. So he'll go to the well, free throw line, I believe, a one and one. One and a bonus for Jamal Mashburn, the freshman out of the Bronx. 15 of 21 for the year. They really have great hopes for this young man. Coach Patino said last night on the big blue line, he's kind of glad that he isn't doing anything more super than he is because the pros would already be looking at him and they would take him in another year or so. He said the only way we're going to be able to keep him four years is for him to play as steady as he is. 34-23, all of a sudden Kentucky's out by 11 with 30 seconds to go till halftime. Western like to hold it for one shot here if they can. They get it. Me. That is five for him. Kentucky has it with 15 seconds. The clock runs. Here you're going to look for the penetration by Woods with eight seconds left. Penetrate and kick it off if he can. There it is. He loves it. I have never seen anybody who likes to have the ball in their hands within the last five seconds. Like Richie Farmer. And he answers the call. Kentucky will go to the dressing room here at halftime with the biggest lead of the ball game at 12, 37, 25 for Ralph Willard and the Western Kentucky Hilltop. We'll be back in the middle on the UK Basketball Network. University of Kentucky Wildcat Basketball is sponsored in part by Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, no win to sink win. By Ashland Oil and its Valvoline subsidiary, reminding you that better education is the bottom line. By Toyota, I love what you do for me, Toyota. By Long John Silvers, making a splash with great tasting seafood. By Great Financial Federal, your key to financial security. By your local Pepsi-Cola bottle. And by the 18 rural electric cooperatives of the East Kentucky Power System. Thank you. 
After the score was tied at 23 all, Kentucky has outscored Western 14 to 2 and the lead at halftime by 12 at 37 to 35. Jim Master, after a while, it looked as though Western's going to make a pretty good run here in the first half, but they kind of fell apart when Kentucky brought on the strong, strong defense. I, mean, I thought Kentucky picked it up a whole lot in the last three or four minutes of the first half and allowed them with their defense to get mm -hmm. ahead and get ahead by 12 points now. But anytime you shoot three for 19 from three-point range, as Kentucky did, which is really the first time we've ever seen them shoot that poorly, they're going to be in the ball games. Western Kentucky's in the ball game right now. The real question is, can Western go back there in the dressing room now and overcome that 12-point deficit and be able to come out here against Kentucky with enough strength to make another run at him in the second half? They might be able to, but what Coach Willard has to battle now is telling his kids, hey, don't try to get it right. all back at one time, one play, and it's tough to do because Kentucky could get on a roll here. Richie Farmer starting to get hot. Sean Woods doing a little bit better, and Reggie Hansen, of course, the big guy inside. I thought he played fairly well in the first half, so it's going to be tough for Western to come back in this game. What a 12-point lead for the Wildcats here in Freedom Hall, a gym that's been awful good for Kentucky over the years. Rob Bromley? Well, it sure has, fellas. It is 37-25, Kentucky leading the Hilltoppers of Western. Western with a five-point lead at the midway point of this first half. But then Kentucky came on with some good defense, came up with a couple of big steals, hit some free throws in there, and a couple of big three-pointers by Richie Farmer, one with just over a minute to go in the first half and the other coming in the closing seconds of the first half as the Wildcats outscored Western 14-2 right at the end of the first 20 minutes. Interesting to note, Kentucky only 3 of 19 from three-point range at practice earlier this week. Wednesday morning, the Cats had some trouble in a three-point drill. Rick Pitino has them go up and down the floor. Two-minute drill, they have to hit 25 three-pointers in the two-minute period. And they did have some problems with it, and uh, maybe it'll pick up in the second half of play. But the Wildcats hitting just three of 19 threes here in the first half of this one. It's Kentucky on top at halftime, 37-25. We'll continue with our halftime activities right after this. Western Kentucky and the Wildcats have the better of it here at halftime, leading by 12, 37-25. You know, the University of Kentucky takes pride in its community college system, which serves 40,000 students around the state. The largest of these 14 community colleges is located right here in Louisville. In tonight's University Report, Kyle Nathy has more on Jefferson Community College and its president, Dr. Ron Horvath. Freedom Hall, it's Kentucky leading Western Kentucky, 37-25. Associate Athletic Director Larry Ivey will join me in just a moment when we continue from Freedom Hall in Louisville. We'll be right back. Is UK Associate Athletic Director Larry Ivey. And Larry, the announcement coming just yesterday that Kentucky will play a game, an exhibition game, against the Russian national team. It's on January 10th at the Coliseum, and I know it's going to give some fans a chance who don't ordinarily have an opportunity to see the Wildcats to get to see them play. Rob, you're exactly right. We've been looking for a number of years, especially since Coach Newton came back. We'd like to play a game in the Coliseum, let some fans who don't have a chance to buy season tickets see a game in the Coliseum, see the atmosphere that so many, many fans over the years, Kentucky fans have seen what really Kentucky basketball is all about, and uh, we're looking really forward to playing the Soviets on January 10th. All right, now it is January 10th at the Coliseum. What do the fans have to do in order to get tickets? In order to give everyone a fair shot at a ticket, we're going to try and simulate the NCAA ticket plan. We're going to ask you to send your ticket order in by mail only. It must be postmarked December 27th, not before, not after. December 27th be a limit of four per order, and that will be on January 10th at the Coliseum. Tip-off time, 7.30. Uh, we ask you to please adhere to the ticket request. December 27th will be the postmark date. All right, Larry, we appreciate it. We look forward to that ball game as the Wildcats take on the Russian national team at uh, 8 o'clock on January the 10th. We'll be right back with our halftime statistics after this. Stay with us. Sponsored in part by Flavor Rich. Freshness from our family to yours. By Pizza Hut, making it great. By Ford and your Kentucky Ford dealer, where you'll like the Ford deal you drive home. By Bluegrass Coca-Cola Bottling Company, a proud sponsor of University of Kentucky Athletics. By your Kentucky John Deere dealers, nothing runs like a deer. By French Quarter Suites Hotel, you belong in the French Quarter. By Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, all around coverage, all around Kentucky. And we're all 
set to get the second half's action underway. 37-25, Kentucky on top. And let's take a look at the first half statistics for our ball game. Western shooting 41% from the field. The Wildcats 37%. Kentucky hit just 3 of 19 from three-point range. Rebounds fairly close. There's the scoring. Richie Farmer leading the way with 11 points. Had those two big three-pointers right near the end of the first half. Reggie Hansen chipping in with 10. And here's the scoring now for Western Kentucky. It is Tompkins on top with 10 points, followed by me with just five and Brown with four. Ralph and Jim, we're set to get the second half underway. Let's go back to you. Indeed we will. Thank you, Ralph. The Western Kentucky Hilltopper band. Jim, Kentucky Wildcats may have to go by and see Benny Ampelizari out there at his pizza place like we did before the ball game to get a little fire built in it. They need to get something going. They got... Well, we're ready to go with the second half of play. The Western Kentucky Hill Toppers will put it in play. Reggie Hansen, Jamal Mashburn, John Pelfrey, Brasso, and Woods, the people who started the game for Kentucky, will start the second half. For Western, it is Jennings, Brown, Mee, Palm, and Lightfoot. And it is me who will put it in play. Western had the ball game in the first half out by leads as many as five. They trailed by 12. The score was tied six times in the first half. Kentucky comes out in a little zone. First time they've shown a zone tonight. Jamal Mashburn. Western coming back man to man. This is the way they began the ball game, then went to a zone, back to a man to man, and Mashburn for three. Kentucky's three out of 20 now from that range. Western off and running. Two's there. That's Anthony Palm as the Hilltoppers score first here in the second half. And that's Palm's game, too. He's good in the open court. Took a nice little jump shot. And there's a foul here on the set. It's on Sean Woods. It might be on Hanson. Who could? You are right. It was on Reggie Hanson. I just legal screen. Yeah. Tough call. And Reggie Hanson talked to the referee before the half started and probably said, come on, ref, take it easy on me. But gets his first foul in the first uh, 45 seconds. Three fouls on Reggie. Out of bounds. It'll come back to Western. Coach Patino, Tubby Smith are behind him. Herb Sinduck, right side of your screen, Mr. Wildcat, Bill Kuyper. Dapperly attired tonight, Mr. Wildcat. Coach Willard's probably telling the official, I got a house in Lexington for sale if <laughs> I'd like to buy it. Out of bounds, and Kentucky's going to get it back. As you see, Brown ending up over in the press table. 17 turnovers for Western. And that was the one good stat at halftime for Kentucky. They caused 16 first-half turnovers. Now here's number one in the second half. So their defensive effort, they're picking it up a little bit. Kentucky by 10. Pelfrey for three. Hanson on the rebound. Mashburn. He powers it good, and he's fouled. Jamal Mashburn has eight points. He'll go to the free throw line to try to make it a three-point trip. Here it is. Here's what I like to see Big Mashburn do inside. Hanson goes up strong for the rebound. He's going to miss this one. But watch him clean the glass here. They attack the glass. Mashburn gets it. He needs to take it strong. Nice pump fake here. Gets the foul and gets the three-point chance. Darnell May commits his second foul. Jamal Mashburn is at the line for the second time. He's two of two there tonight. Give him nine points. He averages 14 and a half a game. Darren Feldhaus in to replace Reggie Hansen. Darren Feldhaus is kind of the mystery man right now for Kentucky. Did not score or have a rebound in the first half. And I'm starting to wonder, maybe he should start. He did a good job up at Indiana when he started the basketball game. Western gets it back. That's Carl Brown. He has six. Really did a good job of sealing Pelfrey off that time. Took a strong to the hole. Western made a great comeback against Louisville the other night. Mashburn. He has 11. He has all of Kentucky's points in the second half. And that was a big-time NBA move. He took it in there. Nice finger roll. 
That's three. Anthony Baum has five points. Me off for the rebound. Western wanting to run it again. Down by 10. Woods. Two on two. Woods. Feldhaus and Brasso. Brasso for three. Jeff Grasso has six points. All of his points have been three-pointers. And what we saw right there was classic ball movement by Kentucky. Inside-outside game. Darren Feldhouse, nice job fanning it back out. Jennings. He hadn't had a big scoring night so far tonight. Good back slap by Brasso. Out of bounds, Western. Was a good play by Jeff that time. A lot of times they'll call the foul on that play, but they didn't whistle for that one. Me is the man who put it in play. Brasso with that three-pointer makes Kentucky three out of uh, six for its last six three-point tries. Having a very poor first half. Walking out of bounds, Kentucky. 23 Western Kentucky turnovers. That's a bunch. No doubt that Ralph Willard's going to do a good job down at Western. He's a good recruiter, fine coach, great individual. Kentucky turning it over. He's trying to fire too high, and Feldhaus couldn't get up there. His backup with Pelfrey, and he went over his head, too. Nine, oh, nine turnovers for Kentucky. That's the uh, fourth, I believe. Was that on Sean Woods that time, Ralph? Turnover? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's his fourth turnover. Woods has actually made some pretty good decisions tonight. That's one of his poor ones there. Western break in the press. Woods with it. Three on two, Kentucky. Farmer. Brown on the rebound. Now the Hilltoppers will run it back. I haven't seen Kentucky shoot this poorly on their three-pointers even in practice. They're four for 24 right now. That might be what you and I would shoot, Ralph, if we went out here and shot three-pointers all night, but these guys ought to be hitting them. That's a try for three. It'll come to Western. This is the first time in modern-day history that the Wildcats of Kentucky will have played three in-state schools in a row on the regular schedule. It'll be Western. It'll be Eastern, and then it's Louisville. Right back down here in Freedom Hall. They'll play Eastern on the 27th in the uh, Rough Arena. That game is sold out solid. Foul on Kentucky. Darren Feldhaus, he's not believing it. Take a good look at this. Kentucky gets a block, but let's see if Darren pushes off after the shot here when it goes up. Good penetration inside. Here comes a good help by Darren. Good help position. Up for the block. I don't really see the foul there. I believe Darren had a point to argue. He's still talking about it with the official Dave Dodge. He's big enough to argue with somebody, but I don't think the guy in the striped shirt's going to listen much. Anthony Palm, 11 of 17 of the year, gets that one, his first free throw of the night. I spoke with Darren briefly, though, Ralph. He played an excellent game. I fought against Indiana. He got the start in the basketball game, got some rebounds, got some points, and maybe that's something he needs to get going on in the starting lineup. Palm goes out, Butts comes in. You may have a great point there. 45-34. Kentucky out by 11. Sean Woods. Inside the mesh. You see a lot of the same things with Western Kentucky as, can, as they have the turnover here. But you see the same things with Western Kentucky. You see with Kentucky, you saw the trap there. A lot of pressure on the basketball, and Kentucky turned it over. 11 turnovers for Kentucky. 18 for Western. This young man Tompkins really had a good first half of play. He was turning over the ball to the Bounds here. Western will make another change. You get Lightfoot back into the ball game. For Kentucky, John Pelfrey will come in. That's Lightfoot. 
And he's shooting 50% or better from three-point range. And you talked earlier about this team can come back. They certainly can because of the three-point. 15 and a half to go. Woods. Mashburn. Western changing their defense as often now. They're in a the 2-3 zone, so we've seen a lot of different looks by them this half. Grasso for three. He's now hit his last two three-point attempts. And he has nine points. I like him because he provides a spark when he gets in there, and about the only shot he ever takes is a three-pointer, so it really spreads the defense out. Kentucky's biggest lead out of 14 on the boards right now. Coach Patino's done everything he can to, to help out Western Kentucky and Ralph Willard in building up enthusiasm for this basketball game. Last night, he went to a reception at Western sponsored down here in Louisville. Next week, he will do the same thing for Eastern Kentucky University and Mike Polio. And they talk throughout the week quite often. I've been with Billy Donovan, and, and uh, Billy's received phone calls, and they talk, talk a lot about basketball, so Ralph Willard still gets a lot of information from the Kentucky team. That foul was on Woods, his first. Tompkins had a big first half, 10 points to lead Western in scoring. Continues to do so with 11. When he came out of high school, he was highly recruited, one of the best players in the South. They had high hopes for him, but he did break his leg. He's had some problems coming back from that, but very, playing very well the last three or four games for Western. Kentucky had a player out of Middlesville, Georgia, by the name of Roy Roberts. He comes to see the Wildcats every time they play in Athens. 14.52 to go in the game. Kentucky leads it by 12. There's timeout on the floor. This is the UK Basketball Network. To Coach Rupp from Henry Iba, head of Fog Allen and Ray Meyer. One of the great coaches. E.A. The great gentleman. I had the privilege of knowing him. Jenny. This is Woods. What a bell house. Woods. Grasso on the rebound. B on the steal. Two on one. Light foot. 48-38. Good open court move that time by Light for Western Kentucky with a nice steal. Sean Woods again had the jump shot from the free throw line. He's got to drop that thing in. It's there. That's Sean Woods, number seven. Shoots a little bit better off the move than just standing there straight out there. So good move that time by Sean. They just leave me alone to work it out for a minute. Kentucky getting it right back. Bell now a Pelfrey rather and Pelfrey gets it. That's four. Big John. Nice save by Brasso that time too. Going out of bounds. Flip it back to Pelfrey. Puts it in. Kentucky coming with a trap. This is what took them from 23-23 tie to lead at the halftime, 37-25. Jennings comes up with his fourth point. And Ralph Willard knows yet to throw over the top. That time they got it done, but they're not going to get it done with me trying to dribble the basketball up court. Out of bounds. Speaking of Jennings, Waylon Jennings and his crew, Marlene Rafferty, or Maureen Rafferty, and a whole bunch will be watching down in Nashville, Tennessee tonight. Merry Christmas to you guys. Shooter, Jesse. Shooter. I'm glad they're all watching here. Eh? There's no doubt Maureen is. There's Farmer back into the ball game. And Jennings goes out. Western still in striking range here, down 12 points. Hanson's going to deliver the ball, and they try to hit Farmer on this play. If they don't have it, he cuts on through. Out of bounds. Bellhouse touched it around. Good retrieval by Dave Baker over there in the Santa Claus hat. Thirteen, eighteen left. It's going to be an elf hat that's working with Caitlin, doesn't it? Second half, Kentucky hitting 50%. So are the Hillcoppers. Hillcoppers out shooting Kentucky for the game. A high arching three. Tompkins on the rebound. That one almost hit the ceiling. They're going to start taking more three pointers. He had to arch that one to get it over Reggie. Tompkins. And Hanson on the rebound, out of bounds, and the foul on Brown. His second. A little frustration that time by Weston. They had it inside a couple times, just couldn't get it to drop. Strong move right here 
puff fake. Hanson doesn't buy it. Good defensive position. Couldn't get it to drop. Now, Kentucky is attacking the glass better this half, a little bit more aggressive. Right there again, here's the missed shot. Now, watch Hanson. Nice defensive position. Seals off well, gets the board. It'll be Kentucky's ball out of bounds. Reggie has to trot back down the floor as he looks up and sees the press coming. And he gets it in bounds. Now Western Kentucky will crank it up a notch here too. They're down 12 with about 12 and a half minutes to go. They'll crank it up now. Hanson. Kentucky not playing real well in this game. No, nice shot. Western on the rebound. That's Lightfoot. Kentucky by 12. Western trying to set up the three-point shot. Yeah, they're trying to spread it out and get someone from outside. Here's the dribble penetration by Palm. Another turnover by the Hilltoppers. Out of bounds, Kentucky. 21 of them. The back slap, and Richie Farmer loses the ball out of bounds. But he's fouled. Lightfoot commits it. See a lot of similarities in the way that Kentucky and Western play. The back slap looking for the three. The same defense. That is only the third team foul, and they're even up now at three apiece. That's Greg Horn. He was a graduate assistant at the University of Kentucky last year. He's now an assistant coach down at Western. His brother is an outstanding basketball player with Tate Freak and Darrell. And signed with Western Kentucky earlier this year. Richie Farmer missing on a three. Well, Reggie's almost playing out of just out of out of something. <laughs> right, I agree. He's, he wants it so badly. That time he had a look of determination on his face, but he's just having trouble hanging on to the basketball right now. Well, he's an outstanding individual, Reggie Hanson. Really is. 11.40 to go. Me, Lightfoot. Mashburn on the rebound. Now don't forget, as we said before, this Western group made a big run of the second half. Came back and gave Louisville quite a scare. Kentucky still can't get it to fall from three-point land. That is five at 27. Foul on the Cats. That time, good penetration by Palm. That amazes me again. He has that broken foot. They made him a pad to, to, to make it a little bit more comfortable for him, but he has good quickness. Here he just jukes right by Sean Woods, and we know how quick Sean Woods is, but again, I don't think Sean was in good defensive position, but this guy can go to the hole. That's two fouls on him, and Jamal Mashburn goes over, and Coach Patino does a little one-on-one. -on -one. Actually, the injury to Anthony Palm is, is a fracture of his toe, so that's a little bit better and easier to take care of than, than an ankle injury or broken football. Underneath it is going to go in and a foul of the count. Jennings, you know that he's going to get a lot of points before the night is over, or at least feel that. He has six points now. That is less than his average as Darren Feldhaus comes up with a foul. His first foul, or make it his second foul. Jennings averages 15 and a half a game. From Covington Homes, and that's where my ex-roommate was from that I played with. Richard Beal. Yeah, Dickie Beal. One of the quickest guys I've ever seen on a basketball court. Seven points for Jack Jennings. Jennings route from the state tournament had 42 and 39 points respectively on this court, so he loves playing here. Belfry. Feldhaus. Richie. He leads Kentucky with 13. And that was a fine athletic play by Farmer. Got in there, got up high in the air for the rebound, put it back in. Fouls on Pelfrey. That is his third. That was on Pelfrey, his third, team six. 16 fouls against Kentucky in the half. That's John. Slice is in there fairly decently. Tough shot. Fieldhouse really did an excellent job. Got way in there, got the good rebound. Watch Farmer come in here from the guard position. That's what you like to see. He's got good athletic ability. I mean, he gets up in the air good. Nice left hand. Foul on Farmer. Richie Farmer coming in late and slapping. That'll be his first foul. At the line is Lightfoot. 
And I believe that'll be a three-point foul, which would be three free throws. Richie was just a little disgusted because he got beaten on that play and tried to play catch-up. Bernadette Locke, the only female assistant, Division One basketball. And she's done a super job. Six of the UK players got a 3.0 or better, and Todd Barrett, Brett Barrett's brother, had a perfect 4-0. And a lot of it's credited to her. First of three is good. She not only is in charge of the academics or assists greatly in the academics, she's out on the floor coaching every day, too. She You're has right. some input. You're right, and I talked to the kids the other day, and, and they are all very high on Bernadette Rock. They think she does an excellent job. I thought he was inside the line. Obviously yep. not. They just gave him, they just gave him two. 54-45. John Woods, Hanson, Rasso, it is there, somebody's got the ball. Jeff Brasso has 12 points. He has now hit his last three three-pointers. He yeah. wants to get back in the starting lineup for good. He's been on the bench for a couple of three games. That's right, and had, and had, and had a tough time a little bit this year, but right now he's lighting it up. Gino. A lot, of, a lot of conversation out on the basketball court right now. Well, we're, we're getting the uh, goggles fixed on Palm. There's Brasso, four out of eight and three pointers tonight. Reggie Hanson, not having a good night. He has 10 points, has not scored in this half of play. He's four out of nine, but what he does have is nine rebounds. Ralph Fuller, after working with his trainer and manager to get Anthony Palm's goggles fixed up. And another thing about Reggie Hansen, in all fairness, he is a great defensive player. So there's two sides of the game here. Offensively, struggling a little bit, but defensively, he goes at him. Gives you 120%. As Mashburn comes up with a steal. Ten minutes to go in the game. Kicked out of bounds, Kentucky. Who set the shot clock? That's all that does. There to get a good shot at Sean Woods. Good job of pushing the ball that time. Got a little break there with the kick. He's played well tonight, not extremely well, but he played almost a near perfect game at Indiana with only one turnover. It's been my the only two games Kentucky has lost this year, but on the road, the powerhouses Carolina and Indiana. Iceberg with 13. Good to see him break out of a little slump he's been having. And another big time move, a turnaround jumper. 59 45, 14 points equals Kentucky's biggest. Hopkins, that's his 14th point. He leads Western. Jim, is this Kentucky team better than you thought they would be? Oh, yeah, they're a whole lot better than I thought they would be. And talking about the two losses, Ralph, if they're in Rep Arena, they're 7-0. John Pelfrey is 6. I think after the loss the other night at Indiana and such a struggle that they'll be voted down to the polls, do you think they'll hold in at about 18? Oh, I think they'll hold. They certainly should. They've played two top-notch schools where you just don't win basketball games. One play in either of those games, one play in the last two or three minutes, they win the basketball game. And Western's still out, not out of this thing. They're, they're spreading it out here. They still had the three-point shot. Could get back in it. Out of bounds, Western gets it back. Nice crowd. I mean, it is a full house. You don't see any empty seats for this one. And this is a great place to watch a basketball game. And you know it'll be sold out when it's Louisville's home game, and they play Kentucky here at the end of the month. Rupp Arena is sold out completely for the Eastern and Kentucky game. Out of bounds, Kentucky gets it back. Speaking of Kentucky playing Louisville, this is going to help Kentucky. They get a, a game over the court here that they're going to play on in, in uh, another week against Louisville, so that'll help them. Eight minutes, 50 seconds to go. Woods to Mashburn. Rasso. He finally went out to about Shively, and he missed one. Out of bounds, it's going to go to Western. I think they'll change this one, because that definitely went off of uh, Western Kentucky. The officials confer. <laughs> Look at the... Coach Patino walked all the way down. Wins the battle. I think you'll see it go off a Western Kentucky player. Watch this. Yep. It hits number 22. No. That's no. That ball went off of Nashville. I thought it hit number 22 at time. His arm was over the top of 22. 
It'll be out of bounds now to Kentucky. Well, I'm glad we don't have instant replay because we differ on that one. I thought it hit the little guy. <laughs> Hanson to put it back in. Woods, good move by Sean Woods. Oh. And Rasto gets it. His first or second two-pointer of the year. What a way to get it. You got to feel Kentucky just on the verge of breaking loose as Western calls a timeout. Eight minutes, one second to go in the ball game. 63-47. Ralph Willard doesn't like the call he's getting on the other end, and he tells Dave Dodge about it. We'll be right back. 63-47, Kentucky Legion. Watch the Rick Patino show with Rob Bromley. Check your local listing for time and station. Coach Patino and Rob will highlight the previous week's games and look into the next week. There's the man, Rick Patino, 37 years old. Western Kentucky Hilltopper. UK, believe it or not, holds the Freedom Hall attendance record against Georgia. 20,053 and 86. Net was quite a ball game. And that's a remarkable statistic right there. Seven minutes, 55 seconds to go. Because there is another team that plays in here, right, Ralph? And a good one. Belfry over to Woods. And a foul. It's going to be on me. Darnell May, his third. The line, Reggie Hansen will step. He never quits graphic, never quits going at you. Hansen has been shooting his free throws extremely well, 80% for the year coming in. 25 of 31. You know, he was a great free throw shooter in high school. He shot 90%, I know, his senior year, so he has a soft touch from there. He has not scored in this half. He has 10 rebounds. Kentucky's four out of eight. And the free throw line, the field goes the first half. Look at this, is great. Reggie was four out of eight in the first half. He's over one of this half. They haven't given him any shots. Really wants a shot to play in the NBA. He's worked extremely hard to get there. Patino has been good to him. Really letting him play out on the court. And he's a slashy type player. Could be an NBA prospect. Rasso coming out to pick the palm. Lightfoot. Kentucky doing an excellent job of covering up the three-point shooters. We ought to say that because Western Kentucky is just not getting any of them. It's there. Patrick Butts has his fourth point. Seven minutes, 11 seconds to go. Woods. John has a three-pointer. That's nine points for John Pelfrey. He told me the other night, that Joey Couch had become his role model because of the way that Joey had played football at the University of Kentucky. But they thought he could not come down and play, and he became the heart and soul of that football team, and he said, I'd like to try to do the same thing with the basketball team because that's what the people in Paintsville expect me to do. You're talking about two classic overachievers right there, both Pelfrey and Joey Couch. Hanson having it knocked away, it'll go to Kentucky. Me is the man who last touched it. Jamel Martinez will come out. It's Mashburn number 24, you see. He goes out. You know, talking about overachievers, I'd like to get this in. If you had a dictionary and looked it up, really, Kentucky's basketball picture ought to be there the last two years. They have been classic overachievers both last year and this year. Belfry. They got a piece of it. Trailing by 17, the Hilltoppers put it up for three. That's seven by Butts. He found himself wide open that time. The young man, a freshman, just pulled up there and said, hey, I'm wide open, and took the three. Go, 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 go. 
Rasso for three. Well, he broke his string. He hit three in a row. They give it to me again. 5.45 left. Martinez wide open. The foul underneath. Everybody going at it strong. Reggie Hanson. 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 I like the turnaround jumper that time by Martinez. I really do think he's going to be a good player someday for Kentucky. Maybe as early as next year, but he's really struggling right now. He just doesn't have the physical strength, and I think once Rock Oliver gets a hold of him, I really do think he's going to become a good player. Joe Lightfoot, the line. David Dodge says you're going to get one of the bonus. Western Seal with plenty of time to make a run at Kentucky. Down by 14. They've got the three-point arsenal. This guy has got a funny story to him. He used to wear glasses on the court. The goggles, and they were prescription goggles. Doesn't wear them anymore and does not wear contacts. And he is shooting the lights out of it. Five thirty-nine, sixty-eight, fifty-six. Maybe I should have tried taking my contacts out route because it's working for this guy. That's kind of an unusual story. It is. He's out of bounds. Western's defense calls the Kentucky turnover. Fifteen of those for the Wildcats. Martinez will come out of the game. Feldhaus is going to come out. And I believe you see the change there. You see the turnovers. Western Kentucky 23, Kentucky 15. This is a ball game again. A three-pointer here. Western's only down nine, and you got over five minutes to play. <laughs> got a whistle. Foul on Kentucky. Western Ben starting to get fired up now. Going to be on Feldhaus. His third foul. And it'll go to the line. Nine fouls against Kentucky. Here's a good look up court. Good juke step there. Now, Ralph Willard wanted the foul there, and he let the referee know about it after this play. Takes it up strong here. Gets the foul. When you're behind, 68-56, you got to make them. And one reason Western Kentucky's been successful tonight against Kentucky's press, when they beat it good, they try to score off of it. That's, again, the only way to beat a press. First time tonight they've missed two in a row, and Darren Feldhaus has the rebound. Farmer. That's three. Richie Farmer with 16, heading Kentucky's troops. And the steal by Richie. Feldhaus. Elfrey. Four forty nine left. Hopkins, he's got it. Hit his first two that he threw up there. He's had quite a night. Seventeen points for him now. He's in the highlight of the Western show. Elfrey. That man can leap. That's Darnell Mee. First year that he's played, he's a sophomore, was a Prop 48 student last year. Cleveland, Tennessee. Western trying to get some motion here to get the three-pointer again off. <laughs> Me over Feldhaus. Good. And now Coach Willard has called a timeout. Four minutes, one second to go. His ball club is down by 10. 71, 61. We'll be right back. UK Basketball Network. G. Hansen's brother along with me, Albert Hansen. And Albert, this is the first real chance you've had it to see Reggie play in person, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's his first year. He's seen a good ball game. I know you brought your camera along, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's not acting right right now, but I'm trying to get the best shot. Hey, Reggie really goes all out, doesn't he? You got to be proud of him. He does, and I am. I am. He's my baby brother. I love him. He's doing great. All right, Albert Hansen, good to see you here tonight. Reggie Hansen's brother, Ralph. Baby brother, Reggie. Four minutes to go. 71-61. Ralph Willard called the timeout. It'll be Kentucky's ball out of bounds. He called it just as soon as the ball went through the hoop. 
Here he is. 44-year-old head coach at Western Kentucky. Three fifty-five left. This is Hanson to Farmer. Deflected. Feldhaus goes to get it. Reggie. There it is. Reggie Hanson. Fourteen. Well, they're about to get caught for five and close it off Hanson's knee. Reggie real aggressive on that play too. So big, big basket that time by Kentucky up 12 now. After this ball game, Coach Patino is going to get the team off a couple of days to go visit with their families. Western's got a lot of people in here, but the majority of them are Kentucky fans. You hear them booing about that lack of a call. They get five seconds as Butts did not penetrate. Richie Farmer did a nice defensive job on him. That's something he's learned to do since he came to Kentucky. He's played defense better. That's exactly right. He's really improved. Again, he's the most improved player on this Kentucky team, both offensively and defensively. Look at this one. That's 18. 315 to go. Deflected by Pelfrey. It's out of bounds Western. He and Darren were both going for it. Good hustle that time by both Pelfrey and Feldhaus. Got down there quick. They tried to throw it over the top. They were down there to at least bat it away. And Farmer has played super again tonight. Coming off the bench again. There he is. He's now now to 163 pounds. He began the year at 175. Came to Kentucky a little heavier than that, even though he wouldn't list it any heavier than that. Because he doesn't get to do as much hunting and fishing as he used to. There's Tompkins. That's three. He's had two threes in a row. And that's 20 points for him. That's over twice his average. And Coach Patino's yelling out there, get on him, because that's all they're going to do is shoot three-pointers. Wants a little bit better defense out there. Answer. Kentucky running a motion offense, just looking for a good shot. Bellhaus blocking foul on Westwood. That foul's going to be on Anthony Palm. Bellhaus will go up to the line for Kentucky. Here we get a good look at it. Kentucky with the motion offense. Feldhouse sees the opening, does a nice good of slicing in here. And they called a charge that time, so Darren goes to the hole strong. Didn't get the basket, but he'll be shooting two free throws. One of the tri captains of the Wildcats, along with John Pelfrey and Reggie Hanson. First start of the year was the other night against Indiana when he had 14 points and led Kentucky in rebounding with 10. Darren gets his first point of the night. Darren's had trouble from the free throw line, too, this year. It's two in a row here. Western makes a couple of subs. Butts gets back into the game. Mee goes out. Kentucky applying pressure now because I don't want Western Kentucky to get any, get any free ones and make them work for every shot. Take a little time off the clock. 241 left in the game. Oh. Compton. Schinken. Jennings, he gets nine. 77 66. 11 point Kentucky lead with 220 left. I think the freshman Butts got away with the travel that time. I think he took about five steps, but they gave him the basket down the other end. Pelfrey for three. John gets his 12 point. I think he hurt his ankle, Ralph, too. He's limping out here right in front of us. Bet he won't slow him down much. He'll keep going. Two minutes to go. Lightfoot against Woods. Now they switch and Woods goes back over to get the man. Paul. This is Jennings and Jennings gets number 11. And now there's timeout called by Western. A minute 48 seconds to go. It's 80 to 68. Western down by 12. We'll be right back in a minute. The UK Basketball Network. French Quarter Sweeps. What tradition Western Kentucky has, like Kentucky, 
Well, they were in the OVC. They won 19 titles. They won 10 OVC tournament championships in the 34 years in that conference. The Wildcats, over 57 years, 36 SEC titles, 15 SEC tournament championships. You can take all the other SEC teams, add them up. They don't reach Kentucky's 36 titles. Western has just about the same advantage when they were in the OVC. And that tradition means a lot, not only in recruiting, but also all around the country. People look up to Kentucky. That's why it's so hard to beat them when they play home court games here in Freedom Hall and in Rupp Arena. That foul was on Feldhaus. Uh, not on Feldhaus, but on Tompkins. That'll be his second. The crowd is trying to go beat U of L. Jennings. And this, Woods is good work. this is good work for Woods here, too. We talked about it in some earlier broadcasts, but for him to go to the foul line with a minute 45, it's good work for him to try to hit these. A couple of updates for you. Alabama just did get by UT Chattanooga, Kentucky's opponent of the other night. They beat them 62 to 58. Eastern Kentucky has beaten North Carolina at Wilmington, 80 to 64. Eastern's now 6 and 2 as they come in to play the Wildcats. Now it's going to be a bomb. Make it Tompkins. And Richie Farmer did the smart thing here. Get a good look at him. He holds on to the basketball. When you're a free throw shooter and you're pretty good at doing that, you like to hold on to the basketball here because you get a few more points too. And Richie Farmer, an excellent free throw shooter, should drop these in. Well, Richie has 18 points tonight. That's 19. He and Jeff Rasso have clearly got to be in running for the player of the game honor. Yeah, I think Richie Farmer, he would get my vote right now. He's he's went to the boards well, too. He's got a couple offensive rebounds here tonight. Richie's just got his 20th point. at 13 it's going to be a foul on Jennings that'll be his third 82 68 it'll be Kentucky's ball game now just a matter of difference well the Clay County flash will go back to the line only missed one free throw tonight well he has 20 points right now if he gets this he ties his career high That ties his career high at Kentucky, and now he can break it if he hits this one. His 21 was against North Carolina. There's a young man who throws a baseball, golf, bowls left-handed. Shoots the basketball right-handed. But he can eat with either hand. That's the important thing. 22 by Richie Farmer. And right now he can shoot free throws, which Rich Patino likes. 84-68 Kentucky. Missing the shot inside a minute. Reggie Hansen pulls out another rebound. That's 11 for him. Western Kentucky, we ought to say it right now. They've played really well. They're outmanned here tonight. Ralph Fuller has it going down there. It's going to take some time. Big block there by Jennings. Hopkins, that's a boomer. That is 22 for this young man. And a foul on Western. It's going to be on Tompkins, the man who just made the bucket. And there's a guy Coach Willard and the staff can be proud of. He's played extremely well. Big time score here for him. He's strong, good, agile athlete. Our next game will be against the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. And Mike Polio will have it live from Rupp Arena, December 27th, 8 p.m. Crowd's trying to beat U of L, but Kentucky's got one more game to go before that. And Coach Patino would like for them to be yelling, beat the Colonels. That's right. You don't want to overlook anyone this stage of the game, and Kentucky needs to come out and they should play well against Eastern Kentucky. They'll be home for a few days and come back and be ready to play. John Belfry not having one of his great nights, missing two in a row. Shot clock is off. Half a minute left in the game. Kentucky will get it right back. Kentucky by 14. They've led by as many as 19 of the game. 
Maybe, maybe John spent too much time with the 12 days of Christmas that they sang to Coach Patino last night. He was one of the instigators in that, along with Junior Braddle. And a foul of Western Commission. That's going to be on Paul. Had a little Christmas party last night, did they, Jim? They did. They sang a, a Christmas carol, the 12 Days of Christmas, and, of course, changed the words to it. On the first day of Christmas, was a, we, we got Rick Patino, so, and it kind of went up from there, but it was really comical, and the kids got a big kick out of it, so did Coach Patino. Who was the author of this masterpiece? Well, it was John Pelfrey and Junior Braddy. They made it up, started making it up in Indiana at the game, and then continued on the bus uh, coming over here and... and Surprise Coach Patino with it last night at the shoot around practice. Maybe we can have him redo the thing. <laughs> get up, get up. Hey. This one's no good. Well, they've now missed three consecutive free throws. Not really ending this ball game on a good note, but again, it's going to be a win. It's a good, healthy win for them. They go to six and two now. Should not drop in the rankings. Woods with it, but a Hanson. 20 seconds to go in the game. Western keeping them so far out they can't get a shot. And Farmer Love. Two seconds, they won't even try to take the shot. They're satisfied with the victory. Rick Patino marches down to the center of the court. And there he'll be Ralph Willard shaking the hands. And it's now history. The first time since 1944. The Wildcats have played a in-state school on the regular schedule and they go away victorious. 84-70. Kentucky has beaten Western. We'll be right back on the UK Basketball Network. Of the year, they're six and two as they beat the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers tonight, 84-70. Good ball game for part of the time, Jim, but truly Kentucky just had the upper hand and more strength. Well, they sure did, and Ralph Willard, Western Kentucky, ought to be proud of their team. Ralph Willard's going to do an excellent job down there. On the other hand, Kentucky played. They got a win, and that's all that matters at this stage of the game. Richie Farmer, spectacular tonight. Reggie Hansen got it going a little bit. Eastern Kentucky's next. Career high for Richie Farmer. Well, for the Wildcats, it's a few days off. And to Jim, to you, and to Rob Brown and the rest of our crew, we want to wish a Merry Christmas. And to those of you across the state of Kentucky and on the UK network, a Merry Christmas to all of us, to all of you and your family. Rob Brown will be right back in just a minute. Tonight, a couple of old friends matching coaching strategies. Rick Patino and Ralph Willard, and it is Patino that comes out on top as Kentucky defeats Western Kentucky. Final score here tonight, the 84 to 70. The Wildcats really breaking the game open late in the first half. A couple of big three-pointers, one with about a minute to go in the half by Richie Farmer, and then he hit one right before the break as the Wildcats went up by a dozen. And then in the second half, uh, Jeff Brasso had a string of three-pointers. Jamal Mashburn really lit things up right at the start of the second half. Kentucky opening up a big lead and then hanging on to win it here tonight by 14. Richie Farmer leading the way for the Wildcats with 22 points. The Cats had a cold shooting night from three-point range. They hit only 9 of 36 after hitting just 3 of 19 in the first half of play. Don't forget our next telecast. It comes up. Next Thursday night as the Wildcats take on Eastern Kentucky, the Colonels come into Rupp Arena. We'll be right here with you live, 8 o'clock Eastern time. And, of course, the Cats will play right back here in Freedom Hall one week from tomorrow when they take on the Louisville Cardinals. Once again, our final score here tonight, Kentucky 84, Western Kentucky 70. And for Jim Master and Ralph Hacker, this is Rob Bromley saying so long from Louisville's Freedom Hall. University of Kentucky Wildcat Basketball is sponsored in part by Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. All around coverage, all around Kentucky. By French Quarter Suites Hotel, you belong in the French Quarter. By your Kentucky John Deere dealers, nothing runs like a deer. By Bluegrass Coca-Cola Bottling Company, a proud sponsor of University of Kentucky Athletics. By Ford and your Kentucky Ford dealers, where you'll like the Ford deal you drive home. By Pizza Hut, making it great. And by Flavor Rich, freshness from our family to yours.